It's Welcome to the Revolution. Hi, Jay. How are you doing? We're here back with another episode of Welcome to the Resolution. My name's Stuart. I'm here with Jay. Uh, today, we're going to cover a couple topics, 941, payroll taxes, and trust funds. Yeah, where do we want to start with? We're what? going to talk about... Definitions? We're going to get into why they exist. Then we're going to talk about the collection component if you owe 941 taxes. So, 941 payroll taxes are the federal tax and the price of being an employer. You, the employer, are responsible for sending to the IRS your employee's income tax withheld, the Social Security and Medicare tax that they withhold from their paycheck, and also your payroll tax, which is essentially the Social Security and Medicare, the other half. That is the tax or the obligation of the employer. It's 7.65%. Social Security and Medicare that you provide, and 7.65% that the employee sends over. There are companies that don't like having employees because of the 7.65%, but if you're going to be an employer, that's your obligation, and you send in these quarterly forms to the IRS for your employees. If you don't, the IRS will penalize you heavily and aggressively pursue you. For these debts regardless of how your entity is set up yep if you have employees yeah. you file 941s and a 940 annually for the federal unemployment tax it's a big responsibility either you have a staff do it or you pay a payroll service to do it for you it's an important obligation but what here at washington tax uh in business 35 years nearly here in 2023 we get a lot of businesses that fall behind on these taxes. But before we get into collections, it's good to know the provenance of the 941s, and that's why we're covering this piece. When does a business know they're in trouble? What's the first sign? I mean, they're obviously in the back of their head knowing they're not doing something right, but when can they be starting to consider what the IRS is thinking? You know, what kind of letters, what kind of so, notifications are they going to get? As you can imagine, 941 taxes are taken very seriously by the IRS, even with the IRS being perhaps less powerful than they were in the 90s and the 80s. They still prioritize collecting 941s as it's kind of, don't be offended by this anybody out there, but it's kind of like stealing when you don't send them in because you're you're doing it on behalf of your employee. Sure. So there's really two pieces to the 941 puzzle there's the topic you owe the 941s, and then there's the topic you haven't filed the 941s. So let's try to talk about the owing part, which is pretty easy. And that is, if you owe 941s, like 25000 or more, you're going to get scrutiny. I think they're going to levy you or lien you if you don't pay them. So you'll, in the most simple resolution of a case like this, you'll get in a payment plan. Uh, as long as you want your business to stay open, and then if you can keep it clean, you can ask for a penalty waiver. So that's the most common thing. Now, of course, perhaps if your business owes a whole lot of money, you could look at doing an offer and compromise. That's pretty rare with open and existing businesses, as most businesses won't meet the criteria of making a settlement. Uh, so that's one framing of owing of 941s if you owe. If you haven't filed 941s, it does set a whole new line of questioning, which gets into morality and, um, you know, the best way to resolve it. If we see a client that hasn't filed their 941s, our next question to them is, did you send in the W-2s? The W-2s and the W-3, which is the form that covers all the W-2s, are the two main components of payroll tax compliance. You really owe it to your employees to give them W-2s. I mean, there's a kind of morality to that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got to do that. Now, um, we do generally recommend to definitely send the W-2s and the W-3s, but 
In most cases, we're going to recommend that people send in the 941s and expect to owe. Now, we're going to open up a whole new framing of this, and that is, well, what happens with 941s? And let's dig into this more deeply by bringing up the topic of the trust fund recovery penalty. So if you have a business that is a C-Corp, an S-Corp, a L multi-member LLC, or a single member LLC, the IRS has the right to assess the trust fund recovery penalty, which is about 40% of the tax representing the Social Security and Medicare and the income tax that your employees had taken out of their paycheck, they can assess that against you personally as the owner. And that's about, it is a, a nice 60% haircut of the full 941 amount. They usually waive the penalties and the interest and the employer's portion. So they just get rid of that and they assess that personally. They do that in case your business closes. Now, the two entities I didn't mention are general partnerships and sole proprietors. Those entities get assessed 100% of the 941 tax. There's no discount, which, it were to the wise, if you're setting up a business, folks, that's going to have employees, don't choose general partnership or sole proprietor, mm -hmm. okay? This is your uh, escape hatch, okay? What happens, so we're going to talk about dissolving your business and its effect on the 941s. If you dissolve your business and it's one of the entities that has trust fund, you're giving your 941 debt a 60% haircut. That's a good solution. Now, the question is, will they assess the trust fund recovery penalty against you, the owner, or will they miss the 36 month or three year window to assess the trust fund recovery penalty. I'll beat that deadline. And so we say to clients that are considering dissolution as an option that you can get a 60% haircut or a 100% haircut if you run out the clock. What if your business was going through some hard times and that's why you didn't play the 941s, but now you're seeing your business starting to come back to life? How do we redress a case like that where you might have the ability to pay you want to keep that business sure. going well if you're we encourage all our entities to stay open uh, if they believe in their business and they're profitable and in that type of situation which is very common we as your representative will negotiate an installment agreement for you and ask for a penalty abatement that is the strategy or you pay the irs and we ask for a penalty abatement and prevent the IRS from levying you. Mm -hmm. The IRS will try to levy your business out of business if you don't cooperate once you're on their radar. And so through representation, we lower the heat uh, on payroll tax cases and usually negotiate an installment agreement and a penalty date. I think Washington tax is unique in that we discuss the dissolution option with people, which I'd like to flesh out a little bit more. People think when they're closing their business, they're killing themselves. I mean, part of the metaphor. They're yeah. ju you're just killing the entity. You can still use your skills for a new entity or not hire employees anymore. Word to the wise though, if you are gonna create a new entity, have employees don't owe again. The IRS criminal division does pursue businesses that pyramid 941s through multiple companies opening Skipping and closing. Skipping one and going to the other. Yes. And... But um, anyway, just regarding the dissolution topic, you need to determine what's next for you and whether the 60% or 100% discount is favorable to you. Are we seeing an increase in this kind of uh, action from the IRS as, as far as an uptick? I mean, 941 collections has been a constant. Mm -hmm. Even with the IRS pandemic happening, 941s are almost always collected. Somebody in their you know, hierarchy has always deemed 941s a top priority. 
And most 941 cases are assigned to a revenue officer. And revenue officers are really the people that issue levies on bank accounts. Other areas do not. So, and 941s are top priority. But nonetheless, Washington Tax is the most experienced group to deal with 941 issues in the United States. The institutional knowledge that we have is tremendous. And the creative angles that we have, which include just looking at the case from a dissolution standpoint, really serve the client. We definitely put a lot of thought into our representation. Watax.com or 888-759-3143. What could somebody expect from, you know, an onboarding or an interview from when they do call in or, or email in? What are we going to be looking for? The top themes are, where do you stand? Is the IRS aggressive? Two, is the business solvent? Do you want to keep going? And three, what kind of entity are you? Hopefully you're a single member, multi-member LLC, S Corp or C Corp. Then we have the trust fund discount option. We just want to know how the business is going, whether you're current on payroll taxes now, that does open some options if leveraged with clients. I mean, we can really take over any communication for somebody on their behalf. I mean, right. IRS power of attorneys yeah. or signs or attorneys and enrolled agents on staff can reach out to the IRS on your behalf, lower the heat. We love these cases, very experienced with them, and love to look at these cases creatively. You know, we're proud of that here. Yeah, it's not a cookie cutter, a one size fits all solution whenever the, these kind of cases come to us. Nope. Looking at cases creatively, that's what distinguishes us in the marketplace in our nearly 35 years of operation. But anyway, if you owe 941s, payroll taxes, or even state payroll taxes, uh, let us know. Send us an email through watax.com. Sounds like a thorough conversation. Yeah, cool, Jay. Thanks so much. You bet. Uh, I think we learned a lot today. Uh, yeah, feel free to reach out. Watax.com, 888 888- Seven five nine three one four three. This has been Welcome to the Resolution.